edition of our Water's Guide Wednesdays. I'm Erin Murphy, an acoustic restoration and planner at the City of Santa Barbara Peace Division. Uh, we are up at what we call the Upper Royal Borough Restoration Project Site at Barclays Canyon. Upper Headwaters is the Royal Borough Watershed um, along the main stem of Royal Borough Creek, um, also historically been called uh, Barger Canyon. And, uh, the Royal Borough Watershed is on the western edge of the city. It's our least developed watershed. And um, this property is about a 14 and a half acre open space all around a Royal Borough Creek. Um, so this, this property was acquired by the city back in 2013. Um, it was a site that was known to have some uh, erosion and water quality issues and therefore was a target for a future restoration project. Um, so the property was acquired with the intent of watershed conservation and preserving those creek side properties, but also to come in and complete a restoration project out there. Um, so I have a few historic aerials, um, just to give a little bit of background on the property. Um, starting up in 1928, this is the oldest aerial photo we could find. Um, you can see the creek channel is pretty intact and natural. There's a lot of trees all along the riparian corridor. Um, but this, this, even this old photo from 1928 is probably um, not completely natural. At this point there was likely grazing. Um, there's a lot less oaks actually in the upland than we currently have. But very little development, um, very little impact directly to the creek channel itself. And then 1944, 1956, we're starting to see some development coming in. Foothill Road, Highway 192, which is just to the south of uh, the property we're standing on, is here in that photo, as well as Barger Canyon Road, which is just to our west. So we're starting to see some development. And uh, this lower portion of the creek channel has actually been straightened. It's likely been straightened to direct it under the culvert under Highway 192. And then 1966, we see a really big change. So this is now the creek channel here. Um, this is Barger Canyon Road, Foothill Road. There's a new pedestrian bridge across the creek here. There's another, or sorry, vehicular bridge. Um, another vehicular bridge here and a home that's been built right here, right up against the creek bank. Um, you'll also notice that a lot of the riparian vegetation has been completely cleared away uh, to plant and maximize the space available for the orchard that was planted sometime in the late 50s or early 60s. And then uh, the property stayed in orchard for a pretty long time, um, up until, as far as we know, 2006, the previous property owner to the city came in and uh, cut down most of the orchard species out here. Um, and then in 2000, this is 2008, so um, you know, all that orchard had been cleared, a lot of the riparian vegetation had still been cleared. You can see in this photo really well how straight this lower section, about 500 feet of the creek is. It's been completely straightened um, to pass under these two bridges and then under the highway, Highway 182 down there. And then in 2009, the Hazesia fire actually came down this canyon and burned um, through this canyon, so that that small home that was present right by the creek in 2008 actually burned in that fire. Um, so it was no, no longer present in the, the more recent aerial photo we have from 2015. So a big difference you notice between 2008 and 2015 is we start to see uh, the recruitment of a lot of riparian vegetation in this upper portion of the creek, primarily willows, our kind of first um, successional species in riparian areas. And this upper portion really kept its natural configuration and meanders, um, whereas this lower portion of the creek that had been straightened, we really weren't getting uh, recruitment of native species down there. Um, so I have a photo of what that looked like back when the city um, took ownership in 2013. This is um, just a few feet <laughs> downstream of where we're standing right now. Um, so the creek channel is totally straightened. It um, was really more of a, um, you know, a, a creek <laughs> ditch, I'll call it, that had um, all sorts of unnatural armoring, concrete walls, concrete stack debris to try and stabilize those banks. Um, and um, one of the one of the issues with straightening a creek channel, um, I like to 
to draw the analogy for people of hiking up a hill via switchbacks versus straight up a hill. Um, the switchbacks are a much more gradual slope, step by step, um, over a longer path. And when you go straight up a hill, it's a very steep um, path over a shorter distance. So just the same in a creek, when you straighten it, it's a much steeper slope over a short period. Um, and so that actually speeds up the creek velocities, causes erosion, causes the channel often to down cut. So um, around the 1960s, when uh, the home was built and the bridges were built, we also see um, or assume that was the era that a lot of the bank stabilization features that were out here when these bridges of property were installed, there were thousands of feet of concrete creek banks, um, pipe and wire revetment, all sorts of other things had been installed to try and stabilize the creek banks because of the channel straightening that had occurred. Um, so, Back to 2013 when the city bought the property um, with the intent of completing a restoration project out here. We, we hired a design engineering firm to work with us to develop uh, designs for what we should do out here. And um, overall, the goal was to improve watershed health through the restoration of the stream function that was um, lacking, especially in the lower area that had been straightened as well as improve riparian habitat and improve downstream water quality. So um, as part of the project, all of the unnatural features we talked about, um, the two vehicular bridges, there was also five pedestrian bridges upstream that were installed just for ease of access to the orchard. All of those were removed. Um, about a thousand linear feet of concreted banks or other debris were removed from the creek banks. So in total, 600 tons of concrete were actually um, removed and chucked out of the site. Can you Additionally, in this lower portion, we uh, tried to bring back in meanders. So, um, can you, uh, Stephanie is asking where we are. She just tuned oh, in. Sorry, I'll just give another update for those of you just jumping in or tuning in with us. We're up at the Arobo Restoration Project at Barger Canyon in the city of Santa Barbara. So we're um, in the upper portion of the Royal Borough watershed on a 14 and a half acre open space park that the city uh, purchased back in 2013 to restore the creek habitat up here. So um, I'm just giving a little overview about the restoration work that we did up here and please feel free at any point during this Facebook live to interject with questions. Um, if you're just tuning in and have questions, please feel free to interrupt. We're, we're happy to make this as engaging as possible and answer all of your questions. Um, so I was just describing how we're down here in this lower, short, previously straightened section of creek. Um, we're right about here. And now the creek channel has all sorts of bends and meanders thanks to our restoration project. Um, so we came in and basically remade the creek channel. Um, previously it was that photo I showed you of kind of a straightened um, ditch with some debris and really no native vegetation. And we came in and we regraded the creek channel through here that has all sorts of bends and meanders. Um, we also created what we call secondary high flow channels. So where I'm standing right now, where there's a little trickle of water, this is the main channel of the creek. And to my left, about a foot and a half up, is what we call a high flow channel. So designed during a high storm event or heavy rain um, to actually be accessed by the creek. So the creek flow comes up spreads out across these secondary channels. We've got little islands that kind of separate the two. Um, Jen says hi. <laughs> that that um, spreading out of the water, slowing it down, allows for better water quality treatment as it passes through all this vegetation. It also allows for um, that runoff to infiltrate into the groundwater so we get a uh, better groundwater recharge. Um, and it also just attenuates the flow, reduces the peak runoff That was sort of the intent in this lower, uh, roughly 800 linear feet of the restoration project. Upstream, um, where things were previously starting to recover a little bit on their own, um, we primarily came in and just removed the, the unnatural features like the pedestrian bridges and concrete debris. So up in this upper section where we already had fairly good recruitment of willows, um, we just did some additional planting to increase the diversity and help the restoration along. Um, the real big bulk of the effort was in this lower 
section that had been so heavily uh, modified by past land use. Um, I have so a question. What's your favorite creaky plant? My favorite creaky plant? Oh man, there are a lot. I would say western sycamores. They're just, um, so we have a lot of western sycamores we planted out here. There's a little one right here. Um, that guy was actually just planted this year, so he's quite little. We've, we're still doing some infill planting. Um, but western sycamores become one of the tallest, uh, biggest trees we have locally. Um, they're great um, trees for cavity nesting birds. They create all sorts of cavities, natural shedding of limbs, and they're just huge dominating trees. Really, really beautiful tree. So that's probably my favorite. Um, um, so anyways, as kind of the wrap up to what we did as far as restoration we after all the heavy construction equipment work was done out here all that concrete was removed the creek channel was regraded um, we temporarily stabilized the slopes with what we call biodegradable erosion control materials so these 100% um, natural blankets that are made of like coconut and cotton thread that is temporarily stabilize it till the vegetation gets established and then we planted 4600 uh, native plants um, about 500 of which were trees. So our native riparian trees include sycamores, um, black cottonwoods, uh, alders, I don't see any alders right here, um, as well as we planted coast live oaks and uh, California black walnuts. And then thousands of other shrubby uh, riparian species, which is mule fat, um, and we have willows all along the channel. We have two different species of willow out here, royal willow, and sandbar willow, um, which are very fast growing, uh, great riparian species that um, are kind of our first successional line along the creek channel. So that's kind of an overview. I'm happy to take questions. We were gonna maybe uh, take a walk up along the trail here just to show you guys a little more of the property and talk about some of the other plants that are out here. But happy, happy to take questions if anyone tuning in is interested. Uh, once again, I'll just say we're up at uh, the Upper Royal Borough Restoration Project site at Barges Canyon. And um, this project, I guess I didn't say, we, um, we purchased the project property in 2013, but we, um, we started the actual construction of the project in the fall of 2016. It was finished in the end of December 2016. So all the native plantings you're seeing are just a little over three years old. Um, so it's a great time. It's really filling in. It's hard, hard to see the creek channel from up here um, because the plants are doing so well. Um, talking about native plants, we've got our um, purple sage, which is really pretty and flowering right now. It's a great pollinator plant. Um, hummingbirds, butterflies, bees love it. And then behind it, um, we've also got our deer weed, which is flowering right now and really pretty. Um, also a really important pollinator plant. Um, we've got tons of bird activity out here right now. I don't know if you guys can hear any of that through my microphone, but um, oh, they can. <laughs> on the road. So just as far as some of the benefits for wildlife, um, doing all this restoration work creates all this extra habitat for them. Um, by widening the lower creek channel and putting those meanders in, not only are we benefiting groundwater and water quality like we talked about, we're also increasing the width of the riparian zone. So these riparian zones, which is Basically, the vegetation community along the creek is really important wildlife habitat. Um, it's some of the most diverse and species-rich um, habitat areas along, along that coastline. So, along that, we planted, I think, 46 different species of plants up here to try and bring back um, some diversity of native plants. Uh, the more diverse the native plant community, the more 
diverse the animal and wildlife community, it can help support. features like concrete and bridges and debris that we talked about. We also targeted um, non-native species for removal, um, especially perennial ones like tree tobacco, castor bean, um, palm trees. We actually have a really big problem with Mexican fan palms uh, moving into riparian areas, so we uh, targeted those from within the project area. Um, mostly targeting those perennial non-native um, to try and replace them with the natives that should be here. So we're in a really unique place in the watershed. Um, this is a really big important groundwater recharge zone. I don't know if you can notice in that creek shot that there's a lot more water right here. Um, seems like in relation to these little canyon walls or some sort of fault line, we have a couple groundwater monitoring wells out here. And um, this right up here is one of them, and we hit water this time of year around 9 feet, which is kind of um, about even with where the water level is in the creek. And just downstream, we have one probably another three, 400 feet downstream that goes 30 feet deep, and we hit no groundwater down there. So it's this, this recharge zone where the water is just soaking in and recharging those groundwater aquifers. So we had a question, how much longer will we be planting and how long will the irrigation remain in place? So the irrigation isn't actually being used anymore. Um, we typically on these projects irrigate for the first summer, sometimes the second summer, depending on weather and rainfall. Um, so we put this in in 2016, irrigated that first summer. We actually did end up irrigating from the summer of 2017. Um, but we mostly just did a few deep soaking instead of regular irrigating. Um, but we leave it in place in case something catastrophic happens or we need to come in and do some um, infill planting in a certain area. But it is meant to be temporary. That's why it's all above ground, even these um, lateral main lines, so that we can come back in and remove it. Um, and we're getting pretty close. This is year three. We usually leave it in for five years just to make sure we have the success criteria um, and re regeneration of vegetation to, to take it out. Um, but we still do replanting. Um, we did some, we try to time it with the rain. So we did a, some infill planting, I think about 300 plants this fall, um, timing it with the rain and with the, the late spring rain we had this year, it's just great for, for getting vegetation established. Um, the plants are, are thriving really for the most part. So this is kind of a whole corridor of willow right here. Um, this is our royal willow, really common uh, plant along our riparian areas. Um, it can grow to be a tree. Um, I don't count it as part of our trees because it's not the true real tall stature like some of our other species, but it, it can be a tall, tall shrub to, to small tree. Um, we have canyon sunflower. Um, this is a really beautiful native. It's actually a fire follower. Um, so if you've been hiking at all in Montecito on any of those trails that have recently burned, it's really common up there right now. It's really coming strong after, after the fires up there. So it's in the aster family, produces little seeds that basically look like a tiny sunflower seed and um, is a really, really great food source for, for birds and other critters. Off, um, so that's our native black pondwood. 
Um, one of the happier ones out here. He's doing really well. <laughs> so tall. And then a lot, I'll just mention a lot of the the oaks you see around were here. Um, so starting in around 2006, 2008, somewhere right around the after the Vesuvius fire um, in the aerial images, you can really see just a ton of oak recruitment taking place. It seems like previously when it was an orchard and a more managed landscape, um, oak seedlings weren't allowed to regenerate on the pop property. But um, we have thousands of um, 10, around 10 year old oak trees out here. It's just amazing to see the recruitment in the uplands. So um, the restoration project we did really focused on the creek corridor and trying to improve the creek habitat in the uplands and taking a more passive approach of letting the, the oaks come back in on their own. Uh, one more thing I'll point out up here is you'll notice this mostly dead tree. This is a liquid amber. Um, so it is a perennial non-native that uh, we decided to as part of the project, even though it's like a liquid tree. Uh, liquid ambers aren't known to be particularly aggressive or invasive. Um, oh, whale! <laughs> Too bad they don't have young with them. Sometimes this time of year I see all these little tiny whale fish, which is adorable. Um, but anyways, we left this liquid amber that's mostly dead because it's full of cavities. And uh, prior to the project, we did some bird surveys out here and found that there were birds nesting in some of those cavities as well as woodpeckers and so uh, nesting cavities is one of the reasons why pioneering areas are so important so uh, we definitely want to do that that tree and allow those uh, birds to continue to move and um, have that um, and then just at the same of it is the only sycamore that was on the property prior to taking ownership it's not a very old one. Um, so as I mentioned before, a lot of the riparian vegetation had been completely cleared out to make way for orchards in the 50s or 60s. Um, so this little sycamore was trying to come come back after that. Um, probably 15 years old would be my guess. Um, but again, was the only sycamore on the property prior to the city taking ownership. We've since planted probably 200. So. Um, Hopefully in the next 10 to 20 years, this tree will look completely different. So, yeah, I don't know if anyone has any questions. Once again, we're up at the Roseboro Open Space Restoration Project at Barger Canyon. Do you Canyon. want to talk about that? Um, we are looking at actually the main stem of Roseboro Creek. You can't really see it. It's hidden in all this dense vegetation we've planted. Um, I'll point out that um, there are still some non-native perennials on site that uh, we hope to remove from the upland over the long term. These are some Canary Island palms. Um, we also have Mexican sand palms further down that um, they're fairly invasive but they do provide habitat for native birds. Um, a lot of a lot of birds, uh, the woodpeckers, the orioles, really like nesting in the skirts of the Mexican sand palms. But they are non-native and they're fairly invasive and come into the creek corridor and establish along the water's edge. So they will be um, phased approach to removal over the long run. So I had a question, why are most of the trees young? So all the trees we're looking at here uh, were planted as part of the restoration project. So they're just a little over three years old. Um, the oak trees beyond them were here existing. They um, were established prior to the project. The creek corridor was really lacking native vegetation as we um, looked at in that one picture. So this is from downstream, but this is a photo of what the site looked like prior to the project. This is the Railboro Creek. <laughs> um, so no native vegetation in this section. We've got a, um, a whole avocado remnant from the, the orchard. They've got tree tobacco, um, so dominated by non-native species. No, no natives in this photo that I can see. Um, how about, can you talk about wildlife? Yeah, so that's one of the great um, benefits of doing these projects is we create all this additional habitat for wildlife to use. Um, we've had a, um, what we call a wildlife camera installed up here for a number of years to kind of track 
um, wildlife use at the site. Uh, we've seen all sorts of animals from skunks, raccoons, um, there's a deer who tends to have at least one fawn up here every spring. Um, last year she had, last year she had one, but the two years before that she had two fawns. Um, there's lots of coyotes, bobcats, um, we saw one bear at one point a couple summers ago. He came, or he or she, I'm not sure, came down the creek channel, walked past our camera, and then 20 minutes later was seen walking back up. So I think he walked down, kind of started to see he was getting too close to urban development, um, and turned around and, and walked back up the creek into the forest. Uh, but in, in addition, tons of birds. Uh, I'm sure you guys can hear it. We've got lots of acorn woodpeckers hanging out up here. One just flew onto this liquid amber. He's up at the up at the very top of the stump of the liquid amber. Um, lots of hawks, red-tailed hawks, red-shouldered hawks. We see kestrels very often. Um, we've occasionally seen a great horned owl. So lots of bird activity out here as well. You guys up for keep and walking? I don't know. Please feel free to interrupt these questions because that's like most of what I wanted to cover. I would just like to see a little more of the site. This is the upper section of the creek that had uh, more na natural configuration and meanders, and the willows were getting established up here on their own. Um, so, probably again around 10 to 15 year old trees, um, but all these other younger trees are, are things that we planted as part of our restoration project. And then to my left, widened the lower channel, um, the soil material that was carved out down there was actually deposited up here as a fill slope um, to use that material on site. It's really costly, it's also not very environmentally friendly to truck, um, truck loads of soil off site. So this was an area that was pretty much just mustered um, beforehand and we had the contractors install that soil in lifts and make this area and then we revegetated with more upland species so we have um, a lot of more coastal sage scrub species sumac a lot more sages um chaparral species we've got yeah laurel sumac there should be some lemonade berry i'm not seeing any right now so lots of sages Um, sometimes people get blackberry and poison oak confused because they're both leaves of three, um, but blackberry has thorns. That's how you can always tell it apart from poison oak. Poison oak does not have any, any thorns. notice as we get further up into the area that we left a little more intact along the creek channel, um, there are avocado trees still. So um, they're not irrigated by any means. Um, you can tell this one was even stumped at one point. Um, but they're just hanging on and re-sprouting from the, from the root mass. Um, we decided to leave a number of those because uh, avocados are actually a fairly important food source for wildlife um, and given you know how barren other parts of the property where we wanted to leave those in the short term um, we haven't decided yet in the long term to take them out they're not really particularly invasive it's not like they're spreading um, so we we may just leave them and let them provide another food source for wildlife Um, all the 
babies are flowering. I'm so fragrant right now. And this is one of the spots I think I mentioned earlier. There were two vehicular bridges and five pedestrian bridges throughout the creek corridor. This was a spot where we had to come in and pull out a pedestrian bridge across the creek. Um, so this bank was revegetated. We left as much of the existing willow canopy as we could. Um, you'll see we've got a couple white alders here. Um, this really tall tree is one we planted. It's doing amazing. Uh, white alders are a species that really like and prefer perennial water so you typically only see them in locations where you have nearly perennial water they have to keep their feet wet um and then i think we talked about cottonwoods already this is another black cottonwood you want to say hi to levi hi levi <laughs> um and then the other tree we have up here is with the really big leaves pointy almost like maple-ish looking leaf is our western sycamore This wasn't part of the original project, um, but was almost entirely weeds like across the way. So across the creek, um, you can kind of see some cattails and some willows down there. That's actually the creek channel. It's just covered with vegetation, so you can't see it. But across it on the other slope, uh, that's pretty much all non-native vegetation. So we're looking at the yellow flowered is black mustard. Uh, the thing with the white flowers is uh, poison hemlock see some thistle in there, what we call Russian thistle. Um, it's kind of a lightish green gray with pink flowers, but the flowers are pretty hard for you guys to probably see. They're pretty small. Um, so similar to that was over here. You can see um, the hemlock is coming back in, as is the thistle. Um, but we came through and cleared all this out this fall, put in a bunch of willow stakes. So I don't know if you can see those tall um, basically just look like a stick in the ground um, because they are. We can, willow is uh, a, a one of our riparian trees that can actually revegetate just from a cutting. So you take a branch off a tree, clear off all the small vegetation, stick it in the ground and it can become its own tree. So a bunch of willow stakes down there as well as a few sycamore trees we planted to try and just add some more native um, plants to this area that was, was kind of lacking along the creek was kind of missed as part of the original restoration project. and a half acres, um, over 2,000 linear feet of creek frontage of along the Royal Borough. Um, so about a third of, a little over a third of a mile of creek habitat that's been restored. Um, overall, the project area was four and a half acres. So four and a half acres of area that was actively restored and planted with, with natives. And again, we're in the headwaters of uh, a Royal Borough Creek what we call an area called Barger Canyon. So this is the same Railboro Creek that flows all the way down uh, to its mouth where it meets the ocean at the Railboro Beach Park or Hendry's, Hendry's Beach as some of you know it. We've got some towies flying around in the creek, brown towies being kind of noisy right now. <laughs> Lots of happy birds up here. All right, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I don't know if anyone has any last questions. Um, 
this is a Watershed Wednesday series, as we're calling it, so please uh, tune in, check out our Facebook page. We're going to have another one next week. Jill Murray, our water quality specialist, is going to be talking about uh, water quality within the city, but also uh, COVID, uh, the coronavirus, uh, impact in water quality and related to creek and ocean water quality, if you guys want to tune into that. <laughs> Uh, we really appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll post this to our YouTube page as well if you want to watch it again or share it with any of your friends. And feel free to post additional comments and questions and we'll try to answer them for you.